question? Crickets. Fairly familiar. Anybody here? Uh, how many people here have never used it? Okay. And so everybody else who didn't raise their hand for the other things, somewhere in between. Somewhere in between. Slightly familiar and don't even know what I'm talking about. So we'll cover some basic stuff then. <laughs> um, okay, first of all, I'm Desiree Saunders from the State Library. I know most of you, but there's a few that um, I may not have met. Um, Post-breakfast coffee, if you need the restroom, it's down that way. And um, a ways, there's like a handicapped one almost right across from the rooms here, but then if you go down the hall quite a bit more, there's, there's another one. Um, and just to reiterate, if you're having problems seeing this small screen, please feel free during this first part of the presentation to move up where you can see, and then when you go back to um, your desks, you can play with the director's station and go over some of these things if you want to. So the um, examples that I've used in this handout that I'm going to show you today are actual real-life projects that I've been working on with libraries regarding policies and director station. And this isn't necessarily 100% a director station training. It's how to use director station to learn more about your unicorn policies and how they fit into things like your CERC map and statistics and so on. To try to, to really bring home the point that director station is an extremely useful tool for data mining and for discovery about your collection and how these pieces all fit together. So, um, to that end, I've been working with TenSleep on their um, patron profiles because we want to make sure that when their patrons in the branch library log into Wildcat, and that means when they actually put in their library, their barcode and pin to get into their My Account stuff and things like that, that they actually stay in the TenSleep catalog. I don't know if some of you have ever noticed, but if you're a, a library with a lot of library branches, there's a one-to-one -one relationship between your patron profiles and the library catalog that they are logged into when they, when they do that. So, um, like Park County has Matitsi and, and Powell branches, they all share like an 11 PA profile. So if you're in Matitsi and you log into iBistro, you're immediately popped into the Cody catalog. That can be kind of disconcerting for patrons because they may not see the same search options available to them. Um, most of the things are going to be the same, but they may not, and their pickup locations may be in a different order if they place hold. So there's some things that we can optimize about their experience with the catalog if you have branch profiles. That being said, if you have a monster search map, we're not going to do it for you. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of work to do. So if you have somewhere around 100 lines or less in your CERC map, that's a possibility. But if you have a giant one, it's like, you know, two, 300 lines long, and there are some libraries in part, um, it's really just not something that we can do. But for, in the case of um, TenSleep, their, their CERC map is already fairly small. It's like, I think maybe 60 lines or something. I've got a, it in, this, in, in here. And we were, we'll be able to reduce it quite a lot in this whole process, too, because we were looking at some other things there. But what I wanted to show you was how quickly you can find out what user profiles you have. Um, and I'm going to log in as <coughs> Washakie. So we'll have a login for 10 sleeps. Um, if you've never used Director Station before, this is the screen that opens when you go in. Director Station is a bit of a misnomer. It's really not meant just for directors. It's meant for anybody who really needs, thank you, Patty, to do, oh, that might be a little too dark. Is that too dark for folks? Maybe just half it. Um, it's really meant for anybody in your library who needs to gather statistics, who needs to look at your collection, um, or who's interested in how your policies work. It's, it's not really, a, you know, they really need to come up with a better name for it, I think, because I, I think that when we first introduced it, a lot of people felt that really only directors were supposed to touch it because that's what it's called. And it's, that's, that's really a misnomer. Okay, so to get started, you pop out the left menu here. And um, I'm going to go into collection analysis. That's where you would spend most of your time. You click on that. And I'm going to go to public services analysis because initially I'm interested in user information. And I'm going to go to users. <coughs> And I'll just do users by library. 
uh, don't worry about that error message. We need to rebuild the re report. Okay, and then for a ten sleep, <coughs> I'm just gonna. Um, you, s you can. These are called measures. So this is a library measure. Anything that's in kind of a little green rectangle is a measure. And you can drag and drop any of the measures from up here in what they, we like to call the pool down <coughs> into the report space here. So right now, um, this is just telling me total patrons. Library use users, I do want to talk about that a little bit. Um, that's something that they introduced with the last version, the last upgrade to director's station is the library use measure. Um, sorry. That's okay. That's true. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think mine's on too. So. Um, <laughs> and I, I know that there's been some discussion, um, we've heard some you know, rumblings that people were thinking that some of the counts were off in director station, and it may be due to the fact that there is um, this library use measure, which Cersei broke out, so any of those um, user cards in the system, which don't, I'm going to use some jargon here, don't increment the charge counter, are considered library use patrons. That would be when you... Um, check out an item to the missing user, uh, when you do, if you do something like you're using the display profile so that um, you can check out books to a display <laughs> shelf and then secondarily check them out to a patron so when they're returned, they're returned to the display shelf. I think Stephen might, you, you guys are doing some of that, right? A little the, bit, yeah. Yeah, with the, so, so those charges are things that you don't want counted as a total charge and they're considered a library use user. So. Those were not broken out in the past, and they're not broken out in unicorn reports. So that may be where you might see some discrepancy in numbers between, especially in circulation numbers. So anyway, that's what the library use thing is, if you've been wondering. But if you've never been in here before, you know, it doesn't make, may not make much sense. But I'm just going to manipulate this report a little bit to sh have it show me what I want. And um, <coughs> I'm going to swap measures. Here. And I did that by hovering over the, um, the little measure and dragging it over until you can see there's insert below, swap, and insert above. And that takes a little bit of fine motor skill there with the, um, with the mouse, but it's doable. And then I'm going to just drop the measures up here into the pool. So now I have these libraries on the vertical and the user profiles on the horizontal. I'm just going to click on all user profile to pop out all of the ones that are in use. And you can see at Ten Sleep, they do just have 20 AD, 20 SF, and 20 ST. So it's going to be a fairly simple thing to run a report. We will create, in fact, I've already created a new profile for them of 2002 AD. And we'll be able to move all the users in Ten Sleep from 20 AD to 2002 AD with one report. And probably it'll take maybe five minutes to do that. Um, and that, you know, this way you can see if you have any extraneous patient profiles that maybe, you know, because a lot of times, and I'll try to show you this later too, someone comes in, gets a new library card, they've moved, and if you forget to change their patient profile, um, it's, you know, it's going to show up here. Okay, so I know that they're okay with, um, with their patient profiles. And then what we need to do is look at their CERC map because we want to make sure that if we change all their patron profiles to 2002 AD that their CERC map is still going to accommodate them in the way that they expect it to. Um, so what I'm going to do is pop this menu bar out again and go to technical services analysis because I'm looking for the cataloging area of director stations. I'm going to go into cataloging and I'm just going to look at collection by library slash item type. So I just click on that and close this. And what I've got here, note up here that this is set to total copies. You can actually apply limits to your reports up here in the, in the pool, but you can only do one at a time. So I can't look at the radio buttons. I can't look at total copies and total titles unless I pull the measure down into the report space and you have more control over that. But you can apply a single measure from up here to kind of keep your, to keep your report less complicated. It, it makes more sense if you're only going to apply one thing to keep it up, up top. Because I could also limit this by call number type or 